All right, welcome Delfino Alvarez into the podcast room today. And uh, Delfino is our master club builder um, and changing role a little bit, still building clubs, but now our head of custom. So, Yo, buddy. Welcome. What's um, up, man? Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us how you got in the golf industry, and then we'll move on to what you do. Uh, well, I got in the golf industry because a forklift went through my ankle and shattered all my soccer dreams. <laughs> so long story short uh, i had an accident and then uh, my old high school soccer coach uh, wanted me to play golf and because uh, he knew how competitive i was and that was something that drove me every day was just competition and i needed something so he saw how depressed i was getting and all that and i went to the driving range one day with him and here we are Seven years later. Cool. So seven years in the golf. And seven years. Yes, sir. What's your handicap now? Um, I'm going to be, since you play golf with me a lot, I'm going to have to say the truth <laughs> a little bit. So I'm going to go with probably around a four right now. Okay. It's just because of, you know, I'm going to be a dad soon. So trying to get a shot. That. Yeah. A shot here on the front nine, a shot on the back nine. Just a like couple that. strokes would definitely help me <laughs> at least maintain pace. <laughs> uh, you're not getting any shots from me so and how long have you been building clubs now so i've been building probably now i want to say three years yeah okay three years cool out here three years ago and you enjoy that process yeah it was uh, definitely different from when i used to work in the golf shop so in the golf shop it was day-to-day -day stuff and you knew exactly what was going on and when it came to club building i had no clue uh what it was i just figured you put some glue together you put a shaft and tip and that was it yeah. but ever since i started working here and everything it just totally changed my perspective and how a golf club just performs so you thought it might be more of an assembly line i was definitely thinking it was just glue cut it and grip it and then hand it off to a customer and then you'd be good to go but the process has totally just changed my mind and how everything I view basically yeah. is what it is and as one of our top builders you know we've watched you get down to like a fine art of being able to produce a really high quality golf club in a, in a good amount of time and i think that has kind of maybe pushed you towards what you're starting to do now yeah yeah initially when i started working i was kind of around like let's just say 200 clubs or whatever and uh jared kind of called me out on that in my first couple months here and I looked at this leaderboard that we have and I said, man, what? That's terrible. I'm so far behind all these guys. And I looked at Jared, he looked at me and I said, you know, um, I can be a top guy. Why not? And literally six, seven months later, I just, that passion in me and wanting to be the best at something got me to where I was, which is one of the top guys essentially. But And that's one of those processes is attention to detail and uh yeah you know and consistency that gets you to do that yeah um, yeah so the the attention to detail is what kind of drove us to where we are now essentially you know is because i had more of a focus in making sure it got done right and fast that i wanted something that challenged me more when i got to that point and now we've come to the you know we've just getting out of the hot season here in phoenix yeah. you spent last few months trying to perfect a few uh styles of customization yeah so we've what we've been kind of working on more so than not is trying to just i want someone to be able to say i want to put a dragon on my wedge or i want to put a bear on my wedge or something that's totally different that we haven't seen before because we've seen custom clubs done in the past. I've seen numerous, numerous Instagrams of guys that are just doing things and putting random things on the clubs. And they look cool and stuff like that. But to me, I always thought, how can I make that look a little bit better? You know, so I kind of had my own ideas when it came to um, wanting to give someone the ability for them to tell me, hey, can you do this? And I'm going to say, I will try my best to 
see what I can do and I can give you something. So what are your main techniques to get uh, these images on onto, onto wedges? So what we started doing was we started getting a, we got a Cricut machine that helps me kind of build stencils and uh, vinyl stickers that allow me to kind of sandblast. And uh, we started messing around with airbrushing a little bit more. So we started getting... Well, give us an example of five. Show, show us a sandblast. So, so sandblasted kind of wedge is something like that right there. Right. So you stencil out your 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 animal, your spider in this case. Yeah. So I kind of do the stencil. We do the sandblasting first, and then what I like to do is I like to put a coat on top of that. That kind of lets you not see the rust right away, because the main concern for everyone when they see something sandblasted, and we've gotten this all the time on our and some of our TikTok and Instagram uh, posts is that oh it's going to rust, it's going to rust, it's going to rust, but not with some of the techniques and kind of chemicals that we've started to use because that wedge right there i did probably two and a half months ago now and there's still no rust yeah so i don't anticipate any rust unless unless you want it right unless you want it so we that's also another thing that we've kind of been working on is there's some um there's another chemical that we found that can help us make something look rust and it's so far it's a work in progress so definitely take a look at our TikTok because we'll have upcoming videos on some of those things as well. Yeah. Well, let's touch on touch on the one club that we're actually doing a giveaway for right now. If you follow us on social media, mm -hmm. you'll see the how to enter. Um, and basically, Delfino has it here. It is in honor of the the President's Cup, USA baby. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> consistently winning that format at the moment it's not consistency it's just we're better <laughs> um so you did you actually made the the cup i remember when you did that first yeah. you sandblasted it i think even in the video we showed uh online it was just it was just the raw metal and now you've kind of rusted it up to try and get a little bit of a yeah. color yeah so i'm actually thinking that this it's 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 awesome because i can kind of concentrate where i want to rust the actual image so, like, if you can see in the cup right there, that was kind of area. That was sandblasted first, and then we uh, applied the chemical, and that's kind of what we're getting right there. So, I I mean, I, I think it looks great, and uh, congratulations to our winner yeah. here Next, soon in know, a couple of weeks. If you we'll want to do a British you know. one or something in honor of the losers, that's fine, I too. will do a uh, Team USA winning the Ryder Cup for 2023. <laughs> yes, that one will be a giveaway. Yeah, yeah. So that one will actually be a lot more interesting to do, mm -hmm. you know, when I have to fit, you know, how many times we, we've won that one. I won't, so. You need a really small wedge for that then. Um, <laughs> show us some of the airbrush that you've been doing as well. Uh, I like so, this one at the front right here. It's got your, oh, your, yeah. So this one I did for uh, my man J-Rod. And he told me, he gave me a wedge and he said, Arizona theme. And I said, well, I hate snakes. I'm scared of snakes. But let's put a snake on there. There's plenty of them out here. There's plenty of them out here. Y'all, absolutely. Yeah, there was one in when I was walking my dog the other day. I ran into one. It's some scary stuff. But I think that image, the wedge just looks great. And all of the stamps around it, they're, they're custom stamps for, you know, Arizona. You got the cactus. Yeah, there. we got the little cactuses in there. I wanted to put the little cactus right there for the eye to represent. And then we did the blue and the gold that represent the Arizona flag and star. So that one came out. I mean, I, I love it. If Jared oh, yeah. doesn't like it, I'll take it. And the next one I like. Well, actually, you know what? Show off some of the custom stamps you got there on that, that Vokey in the middle there. Oh, yeah. So this is also some of the stuff that we're offering now. And uh, everything will be made available online for you guys to see. We'll try to definitely post up some more things. So keep definitely keep a lookout for our website because yeah. we have some awesome changes coming to it and we're going to do a gallery and yep. uh and if you if you like anything you look at here we're going to create a way for you to basically request some pricing mm -hmm. and delfino will be your guy um and he'll, he'll come up with a quote for you so you can do your wedges as customers as we possibly yeah can. yeah and then definitely my email will be on there so if there's any even your own ideas that you guys may have and then you don't see it on there definitely shoot me an email and we can figure it out yeah like i said one thing that we're trying to do moving forward is we're trying to not necessarily just make our own uh things come to life but i want to make your own designs your own ideas anything that you may have i want that to i want your wedge to be your wedge you know i want that to feel and it's not just wedges. what it is you can do it on certain other clubs too right yeah so yeah absolutely so this is one that my man cap loves 
I just I think the uh, the dot system uh, maybe show us that one on the uh, uh, show us the show us the the fish on the on the back there. He called it a fish, but it's a shark. It's a shark. Okay, it's not a fish. <laughs> that, it's not a fish. It's a type of fish. <laughs> and then and then bring the other one up here, the uh, spooky season one. Oh, consider we're in October now. So yeah, so October, my favorite season. So I think this is good for two reasons. A, it looks really cool. Um, but B, it really makes Dill work for it. You know, he's got to stamp that way more time that than is, he does just a normal. That stamp. is a time-consuming <laughs> project, but trust me, when I when I see the end product, I am so happy that I did it. Um, kind of like a tattoo on a wedge. Yeah, yeah it, it definitely cool. is. It's definitely one of those where you have to see what you're doing. You have to really focus on making sure you don't go too far over because if you make one of those just any thicker than all the other ones then the whole thing just doesn't look right yeah. so and but. one one last thing that you've got here um is the vinyl we haven't showed anything with the vinyl yet right uh is the, no is the avengers one a vinyl yes so that right there is actually a blue vinyl sticker you can barely see it now because it's kind of i've sprayed it with uh a few things to make it blend in and i'm very very happy with this because i've had this thing for about six weeks and i've you know i've scrubbed it i've put it into the little club cleaners that we have at all the golf courses and stuff and nothing really has happened to it a whole lot so. and that's part of it some of this is trial and error for us right now we're figuring out yeah. you know durability of these things but essentially that is stuck onto that golf club it's sealed onto that golf club mm -hmm. Um, and it will hold for a period of time, but you know, like any golf club, they get smashed into the ground and sand and all those kind of things. Yeah, so. so I've 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 made quite a few now for some of our coworkers here, and I've given them some. And these guys play a lot of golf, and I mean, I've seen the results, and I'm very happy with what's happening with it. I feel like it'll definitely last on there quite a while. I mean, up to this point, unless you really want it to come off. You know, you get a blade out or you get something to scratch it off. That's the only way I see it actually coming off. If you really want that thing to come off, it'll come off. Which is nice. Which is, yeah, sometimes you might hate it. And then just come back and we can get another one for you. Okay. So definitely is a lot of stuff that we're working on. Um, there's a few things that we've kind of been looking for. So here's some more. Just kind of trying to make everyone see, you know, there's more things that we can do to the golf club to definitely – personalize it just for you you know so let's touch on something that isn't here right now i mean you can see it on some wedges but it's not done by us which is grinding mm -hmm. um so we're obviously going to offer soul grinds as well mm -hmm. um and there's just you know helping other people understand as a club builder yeah give them some sort of concept of you know some of the constraints behind that so sometimes when when if you grind too much off of a wedge then the cg is going to change a lot and back in the day, and this is back in the day for me just because I'm new to the whole grinding thing, was they would add tungsten and stuff like that. But now we don't necessarily have to do that anymore just because of the fact that we're only going to take three to four grams off. And most manufacturers are giving us these wedges six, seven grams heavier than what we would want them to be. Because every time we build something, we want to make sure that the swing weight, you know, is hit. And for a majority of the time, we're having to drill out five, six grams from sand wedges. And sometimes we have to add wedges to, or add weight just to a lob wedge. So in the last couple months or so, SM9s have been really easy to work with, re really easy to grind and kind of not, and making sure that the CG doesn't get moved around a whole lot. So really you're just basically, you're scalping the sole a little bit, creating mm -hmm. the shape that a player wants, not ripping too much material out. If a guy wants something with lots of material out, you have to get basically a heavy wedge from the beginning. I mean, yeah. maybe from a different manufacturer. And then yeah, preferably a, heavy, a heavier wedge will definitely help us just make it more for that player, which is something that we're actually working on now too. So we'll bring out some of that later on to keep an eye out for our TikTok and our Instagram and our website because we'll be doing some specialty uh, grinding events and those will be very, very fun. That'll be fun. A little live, yeah, a live TikTok ideal. for something you yeah. grind in a wedge. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it'll be very unique. It'll be attention to detail for that specific player. We'll go out there and we'll just focus on one thing, and that's making sure each wedge is prepped and ready just for you. Perfect. Well, look, uh, keep an eye out for Dell. Uh, take a look at our website. Follow us on TikTok um, and, and watch all of our custom designs as they come to life. 
Um, if you've got any questions, delfino.alvarez at coolclubs.com. Yes, uh, sir. Stay in touch. Absolutely, man. Love Thanks. you. Appreciate it. Cheers, Del.